Hey everybody, um, I was, um, I've had a couple of questions from some students that, um, that I wanted to ask uh, some opinions about, but also kind of show, show some ideas that maybe, um, maybe will help. Um, so this question um, is in regards to uh, economy picking. And this is something that I've been practicing a lot in the last two years, um, trying to get better at it. I feel like it relaxes my right hand a lot uh, more efficiently than if uh, I was alternate picking everything. Um, so I kind of wanted to um, talk a little bit about um, some of the sequencing ideas that you can use for economy picking. Uh, I feel like I got struck, uh, stuck in a rut um, for a very long time with my playing. Um, just kind of doing the up and down thing that happens when you alternate pick a lot. Um, and uh, that's sort of the... That kind of stuff, you know, when you're, um, when you're alternate picking a lot or if you're going for kind of a shreddy, shreddy sound. That kind of happens a lot. And I think that um, that might be an issue that a lot of people are having trouble with or a lot of players find themselves uh, stuck in that rut. And so I switched to economy picking mostly because one, it kind of makes that easier. Um, if I can do it, uh, makes that a little bit easier. But also, it it lets you jump around in ways that uh, maybe you wouldn't normally uh, choose to. So um, the uh, the idea that I kind of want to talk about today was a uh, pentatonic idea. Um, and usually, when we think about the pentatonic scale, we think about two notes per string. Um, and if you take that idea um, and kind of combine two shapes, uh, if you're not familiar with the pentatonic shapes, um, I do have one really old video on YouTube uh, that talks about that. But uh, basically, the, the frets that I'm going on from the low E are uh, 12, 15, uh, 12, 14 on the A, 12, 14 on the D, 12, 14 on the G, uh, 12, 15 on the B, and 12, 15 on the high E. And then the second shape that I'm using is uh, 15, 17 on the E, uh, 14, 17 on the A, 14, 17 on the D, 14, 16 on the G, 15, 17 on the B, and then 15, 17 on the high E. Uh, I know I talk kind of fast, so um, if you want to go back and rewatch that um, to kind of get the feel of that. But again, that's 12, 15, 12, 14, 12, 14, 12, 14. 15, and 15, 17, 14, 17, 14, 17, 14, 16, 15, 17, 15, 17. Basic pentatonic shapes that you should know. Um, so this idea kind of uh, combines um, those two shapes together. And so the, the first way that I was doing that was legato, um, and that was sequencing in fours. Um, so take uh, pinky on the 17th fret. 15th fret with your 3rd finger, 1st finger on the 12, and then 15 with your 3rd. And then you start on the 15th fret of the E and play the top uh, 2 strings of that 1st shape. So you're basically playing this 1st this shape, but you're adding in a high note from the 2nd shape. Do the same thing on the next set of strings, uh, 17, 15, 12, 14, 15, 12, 14, 12. Same thing on the next uh, set of strings, starting on G. 16, 14, 12, 14, 14, 12, 14, 14, between the G and the D. Uh, then um, 17, 14, 12, 14, 14, 12, 14, 12, 17, 14, 12, 15. 14, 12, 15, 14. I use this lick a lot. It allows you to sequence pentatonics really easily. Um, I like that sound. But uh, to get an even more kind of um, angular type of sound, uh, and especially with picking, um, this is kind of what I came up with for the... Um, for the, uh, the economy picking. Um, so what I'm doing is 12th fret on the low E with a downstroke, upstroke, 15th fret of the low E, 
downstroke 17th fret of the low E. That downstroke carries through to the A string, downstroke on the 14th fret of the A, downstroke on the 12th fret of the D, upstroke on the 14th fret of the D, downstroke on the 17th fret of the D, upstroke on the 12th fret of the D, upstroke on the 14th fret of the A, upstroke on the uh, 17th fret of the low E, and then you're back to the 12th fret of the low E, the beginning. So slowly that would be... When I play it, I actually add in the, um, the 15th fret of the low E as well. If you do that, it's kind of a triplet, eighth note triplet kind of feel. Um, or sixteenth note triplet feel, depending on how you're doing it. And you can do that between uh, across all the different string sets. So uh, one thing that's really important to me is flexibility of information. If I can do this here, can I do it equally well in another place? So practicing it through all the different uh, string set combinations, all the different patterns is really important. I'll walk you through patterns one and two, but the rest of them you can kind of figure out. So, uh, starting on the A string, 12, 14, 17, downstroke 14 on the D, downstroke 12 on the G, 14, 16, four t uh, 12, upstroke 14, uh, upstroke 17, downstroke upstroke, and then downstroke to repeat. Same thing from the D string, 12th fret, 14th fret, 17th fret, downstroke carries through to the G at the 14, B string 12, uh, 15, 17, upstroke 12, upstroke 14 on G, upstroke 17 on D, downstroke 14 on D, upstroke uh, 12 on D, downstroke. This is one I have to practice as well. Uh, and then finally, the G, uh, 12, 14, 16, 15 on B, 12, 15, 17 on E, Back to 12, 15, upstroke, 16, 14, 12 on G. Top one. Obviously these are concepts I'm still working on myself. Um, I spend a lot of time in the practice room every day just trying to get that, that feel. Uh, the thing I've noticed with uh, economy picking also is that um, it's really not the same as alternate picking in that if you kind of have a that kind of thing going on, it's very difficult to move it from string to string. Whereas with alternate picking, you can kind of get there, right? With economy picking, the feel is very different from string to string. Um, I'm still working on that. Um, also, uh, I have a question for you guys. Um, if you do economy picking, um, do you have a tendency to pick more from your wrist, like a sweep, or more from your fingers? Um, and that's a question that I had from a student of mine um, who I was trying to kind of explain the mechanics of economy picking to him. And um, he had some questions about whether it's more like a, a rake, like you do when you're sweeping, that kind of thing. Or if it's more an individual finger motion, you can see that. And when I go up, I tend to use a finger motion, a finger pull, like that. When I go down, it's more of a wrist motion. Um, and I find myself that I'm more fluid going up than I am going down. So, um, again, something to work on, always something to work on. But um, if you guys have any experience with uh, economy picking, 
um, I would kind of appreciate the feedback. So uh, I'm going to put this up on YouTube. Uh, and I would appreciate it if you watch the video and you like the video and if it's inform informative, please uh, say you like the video. If you don't like the video, please tell me why. No, just tell me you don't like the video. Uh, I know I'm kind of long-winded. Sometimes I like explanations. But um, uh, if there's anything that you think that I should cover that I didn't, um, I would like to, to hear that for more videos. And also, um, if you have experience with economy picking and you can and analyze your technique enough to tell me whether or not you prefer to use fingers or prefer to use wrist, um, that's, uh, that's going to be helpful to me and helpful to my kids. So, um, thanks for watching. Uh, please, uh, I hope to put some more of these videos up. If you like them, let me know. If you have any ideas for things that you want me to cover, um, I, would, uh, I would much, much appreciate that. Um, thanks.